Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3. In this episode, as you can see, we are beginning with launching our backup Phobos mission, just in case. We do want to make sure to get that done, so having the backup sent. I don't think we'll need the backup to, uh, to fulfill the mission, but it'll be good to have it anyway. So throttle is up, SAS is on, but we should probably line up first. Okay, and... Ignition. And launch. Okay. Phobos Centaur on Nico 1344. Okay, we are past the speed of sound. And everything is looking okay so far. So after this, uh, I'm going to test a particular rocket that I will uh, show you in a bit. And then we also have a Saturn mission to launch. So much to do today. Also, I need to get into testing KOS with the Nico rockets. But that will be after the Saturn launch. Okay, here we go. Separation. And ignition. All right. First stage was fine. Second stage is a go. Okay, the stage is about to run out. Separation. And ignition. And that stage was quite successful. Okay, I guess we go for fairing step now. Off they go. Alright, looking good. Let me lock the fuel up here now. I don't think this is actually a centaur stage. This is larger than a centaur stage. So there's like uh, Deimos S4, perhaps. Of course, the RL-10 stage is overdoing it. We probably don't need that kind of Delta V to transfer over to Mars. But it was after we had issues falling short of the Delta V we needed on a previous attempt, so... Alright, here we go for orbit. And shut down. 218 by 156. That'll be good enough. We've got 992 meters per second left in this stage. It can reignite. Uh, though, really, we're, we've got more than we need as far as our transfer to Mars is concerned. Uh, let's just have MechJab do the plot since, you know, we've got extra anyway. So, maneuver planner. Um, let's make sure we have... Uh, Mars selected. Come on, game. I really need to put a definite geosynchronous orbit thing. Satellite. I mean, I think I've got a satellite up there. I haven't named it properly, and I don't think it's uh, as powerful as it ought to be. Okay, and we want ASAP. Create node. 3,863. Yeah, we definitely have that. Okay, we'll go with it. Well, the fuel seems settled on these, so let's just go. Take a turn. Okay, separation. And ignition. Five RL tens here. Yeah, way more than we needed, so probably we should have had a heavier payload mass. I hope we don't get to Mars and find out that we needed more Delta V. That would be horrible. 
Okay, we're getting close to the end of the planned burn. I'm gonna, gonna keep this stage hanging out until we make sure that we've got the exact approach to Mars. So I'm going to turn off Smart ESS, activate SAS. And if we have to make any corrections, I'll shut off four of the RL-10s and reignite just one. Okay. So we're obviously uh, too far down there. That's not right. Okay, so... Well, we've got 2,000 meters per second to correct that with, so... I'll get on it, and... Uh-oh, we've lost connection. That might cause a bit of a problem. Well, let's uh, wait till we reacquire, shall we? There we go. So, gonna shut down four of these. And then plot. Alright, so here's our correction maneuver. 211 meters per second. It'd probably be cheaper if we did a mid-course correction, but since we're gonna have to get rid of this hydrogen and oxygen stage anyway, because uh, the hydrogen's gonna boil off, we might as well use it now. Just the center engine for the sake of precision. And we can take a look at what's happening to our orbit. It's all the way down there, getting closer. I already tried to plot uh, orbit matching burn with Phobos, but uh, that's obviously not going to be quite right. We will accept that fact. It's always the last little bit. Decides everything. And I think that's about in line with uh, Phobos's orbit. Let's see if RCS can get us closer. Well, maybe this is a thing that we can correct once we get there. Let's see. Let me get rid of that. Get rid of that. Let's say we do a minor correction burn here. Shouldn't cost too much to nudge it into Phobos, right? Wow, it still takes like 90 meters per second. Let's see how much our transit stage, our asterisk stage, actually has. I think it has enough. Okay, uh, let's separate off the Centaur, well, the RL-10 stage, not really a Centaur stage. Mm, forward. 4,502. I do think we have enough, yeah. Alright, so we'll have this correction and then we'll make orbit. And all of that should take less than 3,000. Anyway, I think it'll be alright. We'll add the alarm for that particular maneuver. And so, uh, yeah. Lots of stuff on the way. And... I'm just checking to make sure that power will be all right. Oh yeah, definitely. And um, this is with uh, only two panels oriented properly towards the sun, so... Yep, I think we're good on the power. All right, so now we have 52 days until the Saturn window. In theory, the Kerbal Alarm Clock might be fooling with me just like it did with Mars, but with Saturn, Saturn is big, so we'll be it'll be easier to hit it, even if we're a little bit off. Uh, but that gives us a lot of time. Our first Titan shot is already built. Our second one is in the top slot, and it'll be done in 34 days, which will be in plenty of time. But in the spare slot, in our second slot, I've already started building what I've called the Oh No, Not Again. 
for reasons that will become readily apparent. And you can see it's very small because even in the second slot, it's only got six days left to build. And this 35% was done while we were rolling out the, the previous mission. So yeah, it's uh, quite, quite a small thing. This one has a dummy payload to test it out, but I'll show you it in the VAB with a real payload. And that'll be the next one after this. Okay, so here it is, and it is an SSTO. Uh, it is an SSTO using a single NK33 engine. It's got fins, and most importantly, it's got a balloon tank. So this is a tank that requires the fuel in to be stable. Otherwise, you have to pump air in or something else to make sure that the tank doesn't like collapse in on itself. Uh, so it's that kind of tank. It's um, the same kind of tank that was used on the Atlas rocket actually So this is not unheard of but um, We it's not um, It's not the well-protected tank. So that's the main issue here uh, You've got the procedural shielded tank which has the high heat tolerance and then you've got this one But the procedural uh, shielded tank does not have a balloon setup so only this uh, tank with the low heat tolerance actually has the balloon set up. So that's that's the trick of all this. You can see we've got the floats here, we've got parachutes on the bottom, and so it's going to be landing this side down and on the on the floats. I could have put landing legs and try and land on land, but if we accidentally don't hit land, that's not gonna work. The floats still work even if you do hit land, so I decided to go with them. Uh, here's the heat shield. We only have 200 units of ablator instead of uh, the full thousand. And you can see it's meant to shield just barely the tank. The fins have a high heat tolerance. I checked uh, the internal temperature is like a thousand something, but the skin temperature is 2,700. And if you take a look here, with this payload, it only has 8,785 meters per second. But it does get off the launch pad at 1.54 thrust to weight ratio. And since it's an SSTO, it has a really, really high end thrust to weight ratio, which is a bit of a problem as far as controllability is concerned. Then we have our probe, which weighs in at 1.6 tons, which is probably above the orbital capacity of this launcher, but we will see. And this probe is going to try and be a communication satellite for us in geosynchronous orbit, but it barely has enough fuel for that and maybe doesn't have enough fuel for that. Uh, we'll, we'll put it as high as possible and it'll be all right. At least that's what I'm gonna say. It's not that expensive. Um, I've got this double decoupler thing here, by the way, because we don't have stack separators. I don't know why Realism Overhaul doesn't give us stack separators. It's not like a forbidden technology or something. We've got all sorts of decouplers, but not a single stack separate. Well, the lunar module stage separator it has. Um, I don't know if that's really a s separator or a decoupler, but yeah, some some reason why there is a hatred towards stack separators, so we have to put two decouplers like that. And uh, yeah, the cost of this probe is 7800 whereas the cost of the whole assembly is basically double that. So call it 7000 for the rocket itself. It's, you know, it's not very expensive, but it's... Uh, proof of concept for if you want to make larger ones, right? I mean, if we can do with one of these, this is technically an Eco 100, and so uh, we could have an Eco 400 or an Eco 900, in theory, and have larger payloads to orbit. So that's the idea. The question is whether it works or not. It's got uh, electric charge in these little tanks, by the way, and just enough fuel to run the RCS thrusters for basic maneuvering. All right, so that's the idea. Geopack 1 on the Oh No Not Again after the test of the rocket. We will test it with a dummy payload first because you can see the payload costs as much as the rocket anyway. So the dummy payload's only one ton, I believe. So there is that. This is heavier. It's possible that it's going to have to get itself to orbit and that the rocket itself will be left suborbital. Okay. So, build. Okay, so here we are. We're going to launch this and see what happens. Curl up, and in this case, the one ton is provided by aviation gas, which is a neutral sort of thing, just to toss up cheap and uh, not gonna be consumed by anything else. 
So here we go. Ignition. And launch. Don't trust the Delta V down there. Um, though we are a little bit lighter than the version that you saw in the VAB. And there's a staging curiosity here. Uh, uh, maybe I can show you. See, now it says 8,700. Yeah. So, there's a bit of a question mark as to the actual Delta V of this. So yeah, this came about because of the talk of SpaceX recovering their second stage, right? And if you think about this, this could easily, if it gets recovered, this could end up being the second stage of something, and it'd still be recoverable. So it can be the second stage of a larger rocket. We could put a NK-31 at the bottom instead of this, this 33. I may be overdoing this a little bit. It's tough to say, it's got a really high thrust to weight ratio. But I don't want it to overheat. In fact, even at this point I'm gonna throttle down. There's a bit of a risk here in that I don't want to go over the burn time for the engine. And it's got three minutes of fuel in it already. So if I throw it down, it could extend it past its rated burn time. It also needs to actually reach a high altitude before it shuts down. That's important. We can't be like uh, at 80 kilometers when it finishes its burn. That would not be good. Trying to moderate the time to apoapsis as well. We're already at 6 G's. It's a bit risky, but I'm gonna let the fairing go. Ooh. It's close. Well, as expected, I think the payload is gonna have to try and get itself to orbit on the real launch. So this is just shy of orbit. That's good. Alright, let's let this payload go. And let me just check what uh, the mass is on it. I don't think it's 0.6. I'm pretty sure I put at least one ton on. Let's monitor uh, 6.57 tons. Yeah, uh, so all told, but that includes the decoupler. Let's call it one ton. Okay, we're, we have to go back into the atmosphere this way anyway. So that's fine. We may lose communication because there aren't relay stations. So, but let's extend the antennae. I thought I'd put that on Action Group 1. This is more convenient anyway since it doesn't require this to retro burn. Uh, but it does have one more ignition here just in case the RCS is not good enough to retro burn it into the atmosphere again. That would be for very light payloads. Okay, and obviously with the fins where they are, it's going to be wanting to go heat shield first anyway. So... Things have been thought of. It's pre-programmed to go in the proper direction. And we actually have communication because of the Nigeria communication station, I think. Uh, nope. Satellite up above, up above. Moon tot. Always nice. I wonder if uh, if SpaceX, when it tries to recover its second stage, whether it'll put fins on of some kind, grid fins, or something. Considering how beat up they looked going on a suborbital trajectory, don't know how well. Oh. Indications of attempts of explosion. Oh, and other things exploded. Oh, bugger. See, now it's because it was wiggling, though. The heat shield's fine. I think it's because it was wiggling back and forth. I should have maybe smart, uh, I mean, SAS hold it. SAS doesn't wiggle so much. The probe core is in here, by the way. You can see that's that's the Thor unit, uh, Thor Delta avionics unit right there. Nope, no luck. 
Alright, well, let's try with the probe. At least we'll get our probe into orbit, our communication satellite into orbit, one way or another. Alright, so here we are, and as far as launches go, at least it's relatively cheap with just one engine. The downside is it's not as cheap as it could be with one engine, because we're carrying the parachutes and the floats and the heat shield. And when you think about it, maybe we should just not recover it. Maybe the recovery thing is overblown. And if we just had just dumped all the recovery stuff, it'd be a lot cheaper. And it could lift more to orbit. But we are testing it for the sake of maybe someday making this sort of system into a second stage as well. So, so oh well, here we go. Uh, ignition. And launch. Hmm, I wonder how I racked up 9.1 meters per second of steering losses right off the bat. Pretty sure I've been pointed at prograde all this time. It's got a little bit of a wiggly as it passes through max Q. Possibly just a fin thing. Let's drop the throttle real low as we separate the fairings. Uh, after the transition zone... Okay, fairing set. Okay, throw back up a bit again. Such g-forces though. Well, we're nowhere near as close to orbit as we were before with the last time, but that's because we're carrying a heavier probe. So, well, let's separate off the probe, I guess. And, yep. Okay. And activate its RCS. And uh, boost forward. And there we go. Let's go to zero. We'll, we'll keep it to that. Okay. Yeah, I don't know exactly where I want to have it go, but we'll start there. Let's have that target Earth for now. It really should be on active vessel eventually. But I don't want to extend the small antenna yet because uh, those will bump into the score. Okay. Definitely can't switch back like that. Okay, well for a second there I was worried we wouldn't have connection, but we do. Let's quickly arm the parachutes. And this time as we get lower into the atmosphere I'll have SAS hold it. Maybe if I stabilize it first, Smart ASS would have less of a trouble. Or maybe I should just fly it in myself. Actually, we want surface. Okay, well, it looks like it's holding without firing the RCS constantly. That's a good sign. Though there's a little bit of a yaw thing going there. Uh, this seems to be the wrong way. What the heck? Um, we seem to be going tail first. This is not good. How are we, how are we controlling? Uh, okay, well, uh, let's just go reverse, please. Quickly. Um, execute. Yeah, I mean, you can see how the clouds are. I hope that's right. Quickly. Okay, uh, oh boy. Oh no, this is not gonna work. Ah. <sighs> I wonder why we were reversed like that. I mean, it should have been controlling from this probe core, but we were clearly going the wrong way. It says this way is prograde.
Yeah, so we were foiled by the fact that somehow some the things were backward. I don't know why. Nothing on the stack was backwards. Everything should have been pointed in the correct direction. We launched in the correct direction. But yeah, it doesn't seem to want me to get this right. Anyway, let's position our satellite properly. I don't care. I, this is going to explode eventually, right? Well, this time, because it's spinning around so much, it's getting to really slow speeds. I mean, at the minimum, it's getting to like 15 or so. Oh, well, looks like uh, 33 meters per second was the impact speed, and it just got snuffed out. Okay. Okay, we're back here with our satellite, and we are back in the atmosphere. We've made a full orbit with it, and we're returning to periapsis to continue boosting out with our apoapsis. So, prograde, and let's just go for it. Oh, vapor and feed lines. So, the fuel down. And now go for it. We'll see how high we can get. It'll be good to leave this suborbital. Then we can dispose of it. Okay, separation and ignition. Maybe I'll just put it semi-synchronous. I think that's a thing. Okay, let's hold it at four hours and go up to Apoapsis and see what we can circularize at. Okay, well, we're gonna get, end up with an uneven time here. Guess I'll just let it burn out. It's not like we need to reposition it. Well, there we are. Seven hour orbit. Well, it's something. Considering basically what we were doing was random tests. Okay, we have a communication satellite. Let's train the main dish to active vessel instead of to Earth. And we'll use the Commutron 16s to handle the Earth bit. We should be close enough for that. Okay. So, relay satellite up. I guess the next thing to do is we'll launch one of our Titan shots and try for Saturn and we'll wrap it up with that. Okay, we just had some serious wobbling on the Nico 2544 here. Um, staging does not... well no, that's, that's right because these are the boosters, but yeah, it was really wobbling. SAS on, throttle is up. Making a rocket much larger than this is going to... I don't think we should. <laughs> I don't think we should go too much larger than this. Um, we do have a larger Nico rocket, but anything more than that is probably gonna wiggle too much on the launch pad. Okay, here we go. Ignition. And launch. Okay, I think uh, MechJeb is officially confused about the gravity losses thing. Now I know we, we were supposed to do some space station construction stuff too. Um, well, I don't have Kerbal construction time here, but we've got a second module for Spaceport 2 ready. And we also have crew transfer vehicles. I have not forgotten that. But I just had the idea for that SSTO and wanted to try it out. So, Alright, getting ready for booster separation here. And booster set. And they're off. Not quite a Korolev... Well, it's not a Korolev cross at all, but... They're off. Let's focus on the positive. 
All right, first stage is almost out. No problems so far. And separation, though a little bit of extra kerosene in the boosters as well for some reason. Mission. Maybe I didn't turn enough fuel pumps on. Should have filled up the oxygen. I don't know. Uh, should we try the fairings? They're all the way up there. I don't know. Thrust weight ratio is fairly low. But, yeah, let's just leave them on for now. Actually, this was Nico 2545, not 2544. Okay, second stage almost done. We'll separate the fairings first and then ignite the third stage. Okay, fairings. And separation and ignition. Okay, all good. Quite a groan from these engines. Okay, we are approaching orbit now. Pretty much spot on in terms of hitting apoapsis here. Oh, we lost an engine. Isn't that novel? I think it's the center one, so no problems at all. Okay, 219 by 209. And, you know, that one failure aside, the NK engines have been quite spectacularly reliable so far. Uh, so yeah, that, that one's gone, but we've still got the other four to relight and use the 812 meters per second on. So that's good. Yeah, I mean, the, which, of course, the, makes the pricing of the NK engines even more ridiculous, how reliable they are. One failure out of how many engines do we light so far? I mean, uh, in the entire episode, quite a lot more, but just on this launch, um, 34 of them? 34 of them. Pretty good. All right. So uh, let me. Well, maybe we'll just let MechJeb plot. For, well, let's see. I almost hate using MechJeb for these sorts of things, but uh, the episode has gone on for quite a while, and I need to wrap it up soon. So I can't be tweaking orbits for half an hour. Okay. ASAP. Create node. I think it should be that that bit there. So this is a good timing. I mean that seems to be the lowest amount. Three year transit, not bad. We can fine tune things later if we want to hit something else. Or uh, moderate our inclination. We do want to hit Titan, so monitoring our inclination is probably an important thing. But for now, let's see what we can do with this. Okay, let's try to ignite here and help this turn along, otherwise we're not gonna do it in time. Okay, separation and ignition. Nine RL tens. Stage normally only dreamt of. Okay, we're on escape, but uh, we lost some thrust from this engine. It's only at half thrust right now, but it's still providing the full specific impulse, so it's all right. It's not uh, adding any inefficiency, so. Oh, we have an issue on another engine now. See, the RL-10s are worse off than the NK engines now. 
It's weird. This one actually has a specific impulse issue. I'll shut it down now. Even though we're close to the end. Okay, separation. And ignition. Timing should have been roughly correct, but roughly is never good enough. We'll see how it does. Okay, well we have this sort of approach right now. I guess... It's not quite right. At least it's in the right sphere of influence. And it looks like if we continue burning like this, it'll flatten it out. Maybe that's for the best. So I feel like some sort of radial thing is necessary, and that's probably because of timing. Uh, perhaps that's best done here, close to the Earth. Or at least far away from Saturn. A mid-course adjustment could do it too, though. Let's plot that. Let, let's try and plot a mid-course adjustment instead of... This is one heck of an approach. We didn't even need a Jupiter slingshot. It's a direct approach. Now that's 15 years. This is the one we want. Okay. Let's see, we want to hit Titan. Or barring that, we could, I mean, it might be necessary to do the Saturn flyby instead of actually hitting Titan. I hope we can, like, do both somehow, but it's possible, actually. We could get into orbit around Saturn and then hit Titan, I guess. Oh my word. Ah. Uh... You mean we could pass by Titan directly like this? And that's almost too... I mean, and... Wow, so Titan happens... When we get there, Titan happens to be exactly where it is right now. That's rare. Ah, oh, that's so sweet. But... Let's see. We need to get on the other side. And what we wanted for the contract... Below 20,000 kilometers. So let's see if at that point we make orbit. How much does that cost? 992, I think we have that. And how about. No, oh, geez. The ascending and descending node are all the way over here. And fixing that near Saturn is not exactly the most doable thing. So, let's say we tried to hit Titan. Nope, there it is. Okay, so we hit Titan. Is there any way to use Titan's gravity to help us slow down? Let's say we manually slow down around Titan kind of thing. It's not like using Saturn's gravity, though. You can see it's doing pretty bad. Of course, we can aerobrake. That goes without saying. But I'm talking about getting into orbit around Saturn here first. Hmm. This might be a decision that we, yeah, we, we really can't do that. Well, that's why we have two missions. One will hit Titan like this, and the other one will do the Saturn flyby. So next time we'll launch the Saturn flyby one. This one is going to aim for Titan directly. And try and at least, uh, well, drop off the orbiter, I guess. Oh, well, drop off the lander, really. And get into orbit. Looks like it's gonna be a hot approach. There we go. Titan periapsis 62 kilometers if we do this 119.6 meter per second burn in a year and two days. So let's add that alarm. And next time we'll launch the other Titan shot mission. And it looks like it's a pretty good rocket. Pretty good sort of situation. Let's just check our 
our power situation. It looks like electric charge is replenishing just fine. Most of it is down to RTGs anyway. Uh, the only reason we need the solar panels is for uh, a little bit of extra drain on this stage. But the extra drain, I think, when we were on the nighttime side, looked like 0.12. And each of these provides 0.4. So even pretty far out, it should still be enough. Uh, that's maybe uh, 13, 12, 13 times what we need. And that wouldn't be enough when we reach Saturn. It should be enough when we reach the mid-course adjustment when we'll probably dump this stage, I think. Alright, so on that note, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.